These are the original hitch pins to which the strings in the case will be attached. To guide the hitch pin, a special little appliance has been made. The hitch pins are now put back in their original place. Today, Michael Letchim is also present at Bönk & Wenning's workshop. Yeah. Michael has written a reference book about the pianos of Stein and Hoffmann. He is here to add the data of this Hoffmann into his computer. Besides, issues that have arisen are discussed between him and the team. But here you see one, two, three, four. Die Hofmann daar heeft drie. Ja, maar kun je die snaar vergroten even? Of zo? Ja, vijf, zes, zeven, acht, tien, elf, twaalf. Ja. En dan komt ijs. Michael's research, among other, gives information and comparison about the string lengths and the thicknesses for this Hofmann. With this implement, a little loop is made on the string, which can be hooked on the hitch pin. 10, 11, 12, 13. We make er een lusje aan. Next, the string is given its appropriate length. Using a left rotating drill, Obviously, a modern course of action, a coil is made on the string's end. Nowadays, we use a drill and we use, to, use it to make a, a winding on the pin, as you can see. But in the past, it was handmade, of course, and it was a very complicated knot you had to make on the pin and then it slides because the pin has no hole in it. Uh, and there's another disadvantage of that, is if you turn the pin too loose, uh, the string jumps loose and you can never use it again. You, can, you can't get it back on the string. But what the system we use, we can take the pin out and put it back and it's very easy. So that's what we do. The coil is slipped on the tuning pin. With a special measuring rod, the appropriate length and also the height of the coil is determined. And finally, the strings are put under tension with a tuning hammer. All in all, a lot of work, considering that there are 146 tuning pins and 146 strings, which have to be made to measure. These are original pins, and And besides, the tuning pins cannot be reused just like that. In the past, somebody drilled holes in them to make it easier to fasten the strings to them. These holes were in different heights, which is not original and sloppy. So the little rough burr on every tuning pin has to be flattened. Next, rust on the pins had to be removed. 